Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. This is the Soul Purpose Show, seen every Saturday on In Touch News Radio, where everybody is a star. And you can also see these uh, rebroadcasts, I believe, on our Facebook pages. I am your host, Keith. And of course, I'm Monica. And Monica is our the star of our show. No. Um, she's the reason why people really tune in to watch us. No, every, I, I every think week. the content that you provide is phenomenal. People I'm, tune in to see you as well. People, people y'all tune in to see me. Okay, so if you're tuning in to see me, <laughs> um, I'm going to do all the talking today, and uh, you can just put that in the chat. Say, Keith, we just want to hear from you. But uh, but no, but here we are at the end of July, and uh, and yes, friends, it has been a hot one, um, and for the uh, from from like record heat to uh, the Olympics, uh, it was it was actually a, a very full month. It has been very, very hot here. Like my plants are dying, it's too hot to go outside and water them, and then it will rain, but because it's been hot, I don't know if the plants are you know just really drinking out of the water, I'm not sure what's going on, but it has been very hot. So, mm -hmm. so yes, there's been a, lots of activity going on, and typically what we do at the end of the month um, is we do a recap of July. We've done some repeat broadcasts, um here um so i think the last couple of weeks life happens but you know yeah. you have to, sometimes you just need a break sometimes you, you have mean? to give yourself a july break because yeah. it's too hot to be on tv listen so um so we're going to do the best and worst of our best and worst of july but we're doing a july recap yeah so july. yeah and so july is actually known for uh, a few things um you know as a, a like it's generally thought of as the hottest month of, of the year but there's actually a few other things that happen in the in the month of July as well. Probably the most popular thing that happens that, that, that the month is known for is that the country, the United States of America, actually celebrates Independence Day on or about July 4th, right? Independent, which is which is the date that we celebrate our independence mm -hmm. from tyranny. In our in our day. Tyranny. Who's the who's they? We want free. Well, you may have, you may, your people may have been free because you know you have Caribbean. So my people were not free on July fourth, seventeen seventy six. But the United States of America celebrates Independence Day because it was the um, it was the date that we proclaimed our independence from from British too. I celebrate Christmas Addicts. Christmas he was, Addicts. He was the was, first man, first man person to die in the yes. American Revolution. I do not necessarily celebrate a Fourth of July, and then all of a sudden it's like fireworks. Um, yeah. And then I need to so understand I. why people, um, why people light their fireworks mm -hmm. until like the wee hours of the morning. First of y'all start at like five before the sun goes down. Right. And then you all continue to blast the fireworks until four day in the morning. And the raucous red glare, the bomb first thing in air gave proof what? I don't know. Through the night. You know what I'm saying? Start, start I have, morning. but... Proof through but the night. But that doesn't mean that you have to do technically, technically through the night. That's uh, crazy. People well, trying to sleep. There are people doing fireworks at our house, behind our house, like until eleven o'clock at night. People trying to go to sleep. And our night. poor dog. Our poor dog. It's not good. It's not good for the dogs. It's not good or, for the or for vets. There are some people who have PTSD and the fireworks kind of mess them up. So y'all, when you, if you do, if you're a fireworks person, I get it. But you know. Cut it off eventually. Yeah. The Fourth of July is at, at, at that point is over. Well, as we touched on uh, last month, though, um, what the thing that has crept into the American vernacular is something called Juneteenth, right? Yes. Which is would you like to describe what Juneteenth? Is? Juneteenth is the day that the um, enslaved persons. Why are you whispering? Oh, sorry. Juneteenth is the day that the enslaved persons in Galveston, Texas, learned that they were finally emancipated. So they celebrated it in Texas. For years and years and years, and now it is a national holiday, mm -hmm. um, and now it's a paid holiday for some employers. But it is a national holiday now, and so everyone will get Juneteenth off every year. Correct, and, and, and hopefully celebrate it. All right. So my take on this, and I'm gonna just get this thing kicked off, right? I, I actually wrote a blog entry a little earlier. What's the name of your blog, month? Keith? Uh, one black man's opinion. Okay, you have to tell people. I'm, 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 yeah, but I'm still, you know, it's still, I'm still it's in the, the lab. It's still in the incubation stage, but I did write. I write. The, I wrote the ent the uh, entry, um, proclaiming, um, uh, and I'm glad that we're proclaiming that Juneteenth is a date that African descendants of slaves uh, recognize should recognize. But I have mixed feelings. You do. Uh, I have mixed feelings over Juneteenth. I will tell you why, and they're mm -hmm. going to be and they're going to be very very unpopular 
opinions. Are they in your blog? You're going to outline them in the blog? Or you're I think I, I, t- I touched on them in the blog, but I'm also going to touch on them now because uh, this is a different platform. And, um, and to, here's, 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 the first one. here's the first reason why I have mixed feelings. Celebrating freedom from slavery, to me, is like annually recognizing the day that you were released from being kidnapped illegally. That's what it feels like to me. Like, like don't, don't get me wrong, like having a Juneteenth recognition and saying this was the date historically that this happened, that's one thing. But saying let's celebrate, like let's do fireworks or let's have a cookout, let's do whatever. Perhaps celebrate the wrong word. Perhaps it's a day of remembrance. Day of, of remembrance. Of the tenacity and resilience of, and the fortitude of the enslaved of people the enslaved and people. how they were able to sustain right. since 1619 when the first African came upon these shores. So yeah. think of it not as a celebration, but as a day of remembrance and honoring um, those who blazed the path and- Well, those people blazed the path and all of that, but at the same time, they were also enslaved. Like there was, they were tortured and they raped. They were, but I don't think it's a celebration of, of the enslavement. It's a, it's a celebration- Of our of captors a, no, freeing us. No, it's a celebration of our resilience. I don't think you look at it that way. I don't well, think anybody in Galveston, Texas looks at the way you're looking at I'm, it. I, well, depending on, well, I forget what people in Galveston think of it as. I'm just saying, to what it is, is the actual day on record that it was the last time that, that slaves were told that they were free and the state had to kind of acknowledge, because it was a federal, by this time right. it was federal law, proclamation that slaves were free. And, and that's and that's essentially what we're recognizing. I'm going, that's interesting. Um, I don't know how I feel about it because again, would to really, me- Would you really let us not recognize it I just, all? you know, I just feel like, you know, if it was, uh, if, if, if it was, it would be sensitive to you if you had been kidnapped illegally and somebody kept you for weeks and weeks and months and months and months and months and finally somebody came and freed you police came and busted in the door and freed you and you go oh hey you know what now that i'm looking at the calendar this was the day remember last year when this was the day that that i was actually freed from from my illegal kidnapping we should we should recognize this every year like people don't do I, that because I, it was it was horrible but, I, horrible think, but I think that you should talk to somebody from gal my understanding is the folks who've been celebrating this forever in galveston it really is a day of remembrance and a day of reflection, um, a, you know, just about all the things that we, our ancestors went through mm-hmm. during the enslavement period. Mm-hmm. And it's a day to honor them. Yes. Um, that's kind of like, um, what's that Mexican holiday where you put, um, no, Cinco de Mayo. no, it's not Cinco de Mayo. It's um, uh, Day of the Dead. I can't, I don't know what the yeah. translation is, yeah. but they put the ancestors on the altar and invite the answers. So I think it's prop to me, it's similar to that. I, okay. I, I think it's a day of remembrance and a day of recognition. Because if I think I'm, I'm happy that at least it's being acknowledged on a federal level because it causes white folks in this country to acknowledge mm-hmm. um, slavery and the enslavement of African peoples. Yes. Um, when they have mm-hmm. tried and are still trying to forget that little tidbit of historical information. Yeah, well, and, and having history rewritten is, a, is an ongoing battle that we've actually talked about on this show a lot. Um, and with that, I'm just going to kind of jump into my second reason. I kind of have mixed feelings about it because this year, this is really kind of the first year that I made this proclamation. So I, I, this was my, this year I'm proclaiming independence. I'm, I'm celebrating this year as the day or the year that I have proclaimed my emancipation from the black race. What, did you just roll your eyes? I did. Oh, I'm so serious. Um, because specifically- So I would, before you continue, I would like to say that the views that he is sharing are not my views. I am black and proud. Continue. So specifically that people would be characterized by this scientific falsehood uh, that we have come to oh, know as, as race. Here we go. So what you gonna be called? What, what are you gonna be classified as? What, hope, what? Wait a minute. Before you say, well, what am I well, going to be classified census, as? What are you gonna check? On the census, what are you gonna check? On the census? Yes. On the census, I'll check whatever is the is the appropriate check on the census, but that doesn't necessarily mean that I identify as this thing called race. So what are you identifying as then? I'm a, uh, first of all, I'm a human being. Oh gosh. You, you read one book about anti-racism. Okay. And now all of a sudden you're not black anymore. Let me explain something to you. I have not read any book, all of the books that I have written in my 50 plus years of living that say, this is why you are actually, uh, your race is black. All The only thing I've written, and I've challenged, and look, I'm putting this out there right now. The only thing I have written, not expla- read. read, excuse me, explains 
that my physical characteristics are like they are. And that's the, the dark melanin in the skin and thick broad nose and the thick full lips and, and all that kind of stuff. That's that's not my race. Okay, so what 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 would you like to be classified as? What would you like to be called? What do, see here we go? What do I have to be classified as something for what, what are purpose? you? What are you? If you're what, not for, black, for what, then what are you? For what for, if what you're is not black, answer the question. If what you're not black, body then body what are you? If you're not Vicious, black, then yes. what are you? Where are you? My, what do you mean? I'm a man. I mean, okay, what national? Since you don't want race, what nationality, nationality okay, are well, you? Nationality, okay, nationality. So, um, so race is, is a social is construct, and I understand the history behind race, but that's what people use to and divide. If us. I it is a social construct, so, so and if it is what, scientifically not proven that we belong to this genus called uh, ne what? Negroid, okay. uh, which is where it came from. Versus Caucasoid versus Mongoloid. I understand. I understand. Okay, well, if that's the case, it. if everybody so, understands so that, so what are you classifying yourself as? You, are you going to? What are you going by? National now you're origin? talking about my culture. So my cultural identity. Culturally, or what you going to is is is, is, is um, I'm an American of African descent, and it, let me tell you why I think that's important. Because if we can get ourselves, we can get our people, our own people, to acknowledge that we are Americans of African descent, maybe we could start getting uh, the majority to acknowledge the same thing, which is they are Americans of African descent. Because have we found anything scientifically that says that we're not all from the same? No, we are not. So I'm still so going to go by black. And then, and, then, and then those of us who believe, who are, who call, who can confess Christianity, go further to say that man wasn't created in eight different locations of the world, were we? No, we're, we we the, all come from the same. The first person, was, the cradle was, of civilization. I think her per, name was Lucy, but the first person, the first person that they found was an African. So anyway, but so I, I'm I black. My descendants look, and I, I know, and I know what my cultural identification is, which is why this is a whole unpopular. Like he's saying, he not black. Well, no, I, I get what my cultural identification is, but I also get that if I were to procreate with someone who had different physical characteristics, even if that person was really, really, really light skinned, then that child would have different, like a mixture of physical characteristics. So if you I had- you, 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 you procreated with a white woman. You're if to. I procreated with a white woman or a person of, with European, light, melanin, um, long, no. okay. straight hair, like that individual would be a mix of those two people. So what are they? Are they black, black. or are they white? They're black. And, and they're black because what? Because that's what society says Because that's what you get right. That's, that's exactly, exactly. Well, I'm black. What I will say, I'm not going through all of that. I understand it's a racial conflict. I'm gonna do a whole show. And you should do that. Show. I may not be present. I am black. I understand the history behind it. I am proudly black. I don't have any apologies about being that. You can say it's a social construct. Folks attempt to use that to try to divide us and make it like make it seem that we are less than. Uh, what I will say is that when I made a decision that I'm no longer going to refer to myself as a person of color, I am a person of the global majority. Okay. Because that's accurate. That's factual. That's, that's, that's factually factual. accurate. Yes. Factually accurate. Most of the people. So instead of saying are, when you're now, brown, brown. And I saw this on Facebook as a, a meme. I will say that I am no longer a person of color. I think we should all say that that we are now persons of the global majority because that is accurate. And I'm it, not doing. I'm not doing that. Uh, why? Because we're you, you won't say that you're not black, but you're not going to say that you're a person, which is the truth. So what does that mean? I'm a person you're a person of the global majority. No, so there are more black and brown people in this, in and this so world than white what? people. So guess what? I'm the majority. It's the truth. Because now racism be, be, is now no, fixed. because the thing. No, I didn't say that. The the flip side is is that you don't use a term that is rooted in white supremacy. Per, person of color. Like well, I mean, you. That's your thing. What I'm suggesting. No, is, okay. That's, what I'm suggesting right. is. That takes too much to try to un un unravel and explain. Saying you're a person of the global majority is factually accurate. And it forces also white folks to say that because that's that's true. That's truth to power. White person of color is something that they created in order um, that's rooted in white supremacy. And I would suggest that we use person of the global majority. That's my take. Okay, well, we can, and we can explore that more. What, while we're happen. on the subject of race, um, so before we get there, so he shouted out his blog. I've also created a blog. It tell is, us, tell everyone about your blog. I mean. It is called, so since we're talking about best and worst of July, this, this month, I uh, finally did my, I finally did my blog. Mm -hmm. It's called journey to miles, journey to miles.com is where you can find it. And it, it explores my journey to motherhood. Um, and so the, 
entries are every Sunday and Wednesday. Okay. And we're, I'm almost finished with this. It's a blog series. I'm almost finished with the series and we'll see what the Lord leads me to do after that. But the name, the title of the, the, the blog is Journey to Miles. It's journeytomiles.com. And so I would love for you all to subscribe to it and give me feedback um, about what you think. Well, let me just first say um, that I'm, I'm super uh, proud of you for launching what has incubated you for quite some time. And I know that this is something that God put on your heart to do. Mm -hmm. And I see you um, giving a lot of time, effort, and energy, even when I feel like that time, effort, and energy should be directed towards me. You are you are dedicated um, to He always to doing makes it. Work. Why do you always have to center yourself? And you're giving me a compliment and you flip and center yourself and the compliments you're giving me. Oh, did I do that? Yeah, that was a bit narcissistic, don't you think? What is what, what's on what else is on the subject of race? Do you I think do you I appreciate the compliment, but don't center yourself in a compliment to me. I don't do that to you. Okay. Okay. So speaking of black people, the it NFL. Exist. It's a, it's a false, oh. false what, what would you like me to say? No, speaking of black people. Oh, because what would you like me to say if you don't? No, no, no. Okay. Please, go ahead. Speaking go of on. black folks. Yeah. So um the NFL has yes. announced apparently mm -hmm. that it intends to sing the Negro National Anthem or, or play the Negro National Anthem or lift every voice and sing before every football game. Yes. Why? No one asked that. They, they didn't talk to a single black person before <laughs> they say, you know what's a good idea? Since we've, cra we've crapped on black folks, we don't have no black coaches hardly. We won't give any coaches any head coaching positions. Yeah. We're not gonna hire any more. We're not gonna uh, really push for any more black quarterbacks. We're not gonna do any black ownership. Um, so let's pacify the black people by playing the Negro National Anthem before each game. You know what I want? Not a single black person. Yeah. Ask for that. And if the NFL Players Association, the people that are at the table advocating for that, y'all ain't ask us. And if Jay-Z's advocating for it, Jay-Z ain't ask us either. I do not want them to play the black. No, NFL. for what? Why? For why? Let me let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Because I'm and this is a serious question. I'm not, I'm asking you, but I'm also asking everybody. So what happens if the Negro the Negro, because that's what it was called, Negro National Anthem is played and white players decide to take a knee? And again, see what I'm saying? I'm just, so that's I'm, a very good question. I'm just asking. So this is why it doesn't need to be played because that to me is much more offensive. Well, what I promise you, James, will, it very well could. So some white folks because they are evil. So you're gonna put that in the atmosphere. Some white person because they are evil yeah. people are going to what make a decision. Evil, evil? What is wrong with you? Some white people oh. because they are evil people. Okay, will just to be contrary yes and to create some type of whatever some people will will stand will to stand be spiteful the and kneel they will the kneel in the stand or turn their back and do something just real crazy with the negro national anthem i promise you that's gonna happen and i think that is probably more disrespectful mm. because if you listen if you read the words first of all back up literary voice and sing was written by james weldon johnson who is a floridian and shout out to sigma um, Five eight and six. Five eight and six. It's either a single. So he's a lawyer. Um, but shout out to James Wilson Johnson. It was a poet turned into turned into a song. Mm -hmm. The 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 words of the song, all three verses, are absolutely beautiful and powerful. And it talks really about if you read them, as most black folks probably should have. Make sure you teach your children. Um, it talks about our journey in this country and 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 how God has kept us. Mm -hmm. How how it talks about our resilience talks about how um, despite all the things that we've gone through that we still remain victorious, right? So yes. those are not necessarily the words, but that's essentially what the poem is about. How does that relate to football or any, why? So let me tell you, so let's just tell it, let's say what it is. What happened was on the heels of the George Floyd murder and the subsequent trial and verdict of his murderer, um, we know that there is this uh, wave of pro-inclusive sentiment that says that we should look for ways, all corporations, companies, institutions, look for ways to be more inclusive. And this is an attempt by the NFL, who doesn't have the greatest record, track record on diversity, 
even though the majority of the players are, are, are black players, um, to just say, here's what we, we, we should do this uh, to honor them. Now, so that you get a, you get a, you know, you get a B minus C, whatever for, for effort. But to your point, when you, when you ask us what we want, then you, sh you should just ask us what, what it is right. we want and in order to feel like, you know, the playing field is, is more, the proverbial playing field is more equitable. You know what they should have done? They could have done? What should they, have? they could have figured out how to get more black ownership. They could have figured out how to hire more black coaches. Even vendors. I mean, when you do vendors business, do business. If you really want, if, if what, if you really want to do what you're suggesting they're trying to do, you have black owned companies that could provide um, things to NFL teams, to the NFL, um, yeah, with black, owned marketing, black firms. owned marketing firms, janitorial yeah. services. There's so many things, mm -hmm. so many black owned businesses that you could utilize if your effort really was to do the things that you're suggesting on the heels of the George Floyd murder. That, if that's truly your goal, playing the New York National Anthem before every game is doing what? It's performative. Right. It's not moving the needle. It's something that makes white folks feel good because ain't no black people ask for that. What we want is to have a seat at the table and ensure that those NFL dollars that you are pushing towards everybody else, put those money, put that money in the hands of black entrepreneurs, right? So I'll just put an example out there. Give me a, use Tampa Bay Bucks, for example. There's tons of caterers, there's a couple of black caterers in Tampa Bay, that if you're really interested in pushing the needle forward in terms of race relations within the NFL, you create a program, and perhaps they've done it if they haven't, I'm speaking out of turn, please let me know, but you create a program such that Black-owned businesses, such as Livio's, who was, whose owner was on our, our show a couple months ago, create a situation where she can become a vendor right? Mm -hmm. Or create a situation where you have an artist do, I mean, there's so many different things that you could do um, outside of playing the New York National Anthem. And perhaps they are, I'm just aware they haven't publicized it. But to me, playing the Negro National Anthem before the game, when no one, no one asked you to do it is, is real, 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 per, per, it's performance. Like it's, per, like it's performance. Well, I hear you. Listen. Monica, for one, is not in favor of it. And I will share that if anybody turns it back with disrespects, James Weldon Johnson's beautiful um, lyrics mm -hmm. by being Jack Butts, I'm going to have a problem with it. See, you're going to go to the thing. And the, I'm just saying. We have, we, we have freedom of expression and people can express themselves <laughs> any kind of way, just like when uh, uh, Cap Neil. But he kneeled for a reason. The reason these people, they're, Cap they're Neil. Expressing, they're expressing themselves. In what way? Just to be a jack butt? Let me say, you know, white backlash is real. People feel like. Let me just say this before we, before we um, as we move into our, 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 our break. There are, there are white people who hear us say things about, like say the, the playing of the, the Negro National Anthem before a game. And the backlash to that is they feel like, you know, why are we doing this if, if black people don't? It's not even what black people want to do. And so their way of protesting is to go, this is stupid. So we're going to just kneel just to show the NFL that what they did is not really, um, um, it's not really but it's, but it's not based it's not based on anything it's based to just be spiteful and hateful which is very different than what cap did and why the, and too, and why the black want, because that's why the black of, folks that's what freedom of expression is well, all about. i get it i they, can be they, whatever i want they constitutionally they have the right to do it but i will share that them doing it is not substantive on any level it is really to be spiteful and it's no, nowhere near there's no comparison excuse me comparison in terms of why they potentially would do it and why cap and the other black players and those white players who were ally who stood, who stood in allyship with the black players while they were doing it's very very different. So I'm not in favor of uh, lift every voice and saying not that my opinion matters, but I'm not in favor. Okay. So do we have a break now? Or? Well, you know what? Let's go ahead and just take and take our break now. When we come back from our break, we're going to talk about Dr. Dre. We're going to talk about um, spousal support um, uh, from Dr. Dre, and we're going to argue whether or not we think that the dollar amount is is fair. Be back.
All right, all right, all right. We are back. We are back. This is the Soul Purpose Show. Um, we're talking about, well, this is our best of. This yes. is best of July. And we're talking best about and worst, because we best have and to worst. Question. Best and worst. A lot of this stuff is the worst, because a lot of stuff happened. A lot of bad stuff happened. You know? uh, well, you know, it was not bad, but just things to consider. Things to reflect consider. upon. Things to reflect upon. Things that are, are matters of import to the community, to the um, to the black community and otherwise. Hey, listen, Dr. Dre uh, and his uh, wife have been separated since last year. They have. They have been separated since last year and it was announced this week was that the, the amount of these court ordered settlement for spousal support. Tell our listeners what spousal support means. You gotta pay them ducats to your spouse. Okay. So it's like, like alimony. It's like al alimony. So I'm married to an attorney. We had an attorney. But I, but I don't do family it. law. It's, it's alimony. Okay. It's, it's not, alimony. It's, not, it's, it's, not, not it's not child support. support and it's alimony. It's spousal, alimony. It's spousal support, which means, especially in California, it means that what you owe your spouse for the years of marriage in and their, and their, and their case. So they were together for about 25 years. Mm -hmm. So if you go back 25 years, it takes us really kind of all the way back to the popularity of you know him and Snoop and you know kind of hit the oh, scene. Yeah, I think about that. So she's been with him for a long time and been with him on the come up, right? Mm -hmm. Now apparently, allegedly, there was also a pre. We'll get into that in a second. But the support, the the, the spousal support settlement was two hundred and ninety three thousand dollars per month. Two hundred ninety three thousand dollars per month. If we just round it up to three hundred thousand times twelve, so that's about three points. So about three and a half million dollars. A year mm -hmm. um, sounds like a lot of money. Mm -hmm. when, you compare actually, to, when you compare to what he has, it really is not that much. Yeah, I was gonna say, but actually, what, and what she was seeking was uh, around two million dollars a month. So what I want to do is this: I want to just, for argument's sake, we can get down into the specifics of of, um, of why we think it's a good number, bad number. But I just want to um, break down what she was claiming, what she needs that equaled the two million dollars a month that she was seeking. Okay. Um, laundry and cleaning at ten thousand dollars a month, clothes at one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars per month, um, education, which is stands, which was for tuition and living expenses of sixty thousand dollars. That's sixty thousand dollars a month. Uh, entertainment at nine hundred thousand dollars a month. Nine hundred thousand dollars a month for entertainment. How much is Dr. Dre worth? Continue, but how much is Dr. Dre worth? Charitable contributions are one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars a month. Mortgage at one hundred thousand dollars a month, and telephone. And they have several residences, obviously. And then telephone, cell phone, email uh, at twenty thousand dollars a month. So listen, I think, and she didn't get to two million dollars. I think that when you put on a piece of paper, or when a lawyer stands before a judge, and you can clean this up for us, stands before a judge says, "My, your honor, my client needs nine hundred thousand dollars a month." for entertainment. I think the judges, even in California, go, I'm gonna fix you. That's just what, don't, you, don't, you don't think you offend judges when you say you need 900? That's almost a million dollars a month. You may, but I think it's- so, For entertainment. So let's back up for a second. And again, I don't, I, don't, know I, I, don't I don't do family law. Yeah. They were married for 25 years. It was a status of standard of living she was accustomed to. Yes. But California is a community property state. Okay. So I, like to, I, I, I will in a second, uh, whereas Florida, which is where we are, is equitable, equitable, equitable distribution, distribution yes. which means that they really, the courts really you kind, kind of, of more, things kind of divide things 50-50. It may not be exactly 50-50, but the goal is to try to divide the assets 50-50 mm -hmm. um, and assets that are accumulated during the marriage. And if I'm a family lawyer, if I'm saying anything wrong, feel free to chime in in the chat. I'm in. But community property, there are nine states that are community property states. And the only reason I know that information is because I was looking at it today for a, converse, no, for a conversation I was having on Clubhouse mm -hmm. um, about divorce. But for community property, it's just split down the middle. You yeah. just, you, I mean, it's it's shared, it's split equally. You seriously. So whatever you accumulated during the marriage, yeah. whether, and it may even be before the marriage, whatever you have, whatever assets you have, during the marriage. So let's say you have a bank account and then during the marriage, you know, you put her name on it. It's just, I think now it becomes community property. Wow. So everything is split, right? And so whatever he had before they got married, <laughs> arguably she had, she, she's entitled to. So it, that's a little bit different. Um, I understand they had a prenup. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. 
So I don't know if what she's asking, what she what she asked for was above and beyond the prenup or if what she received was what the prenup, you know, expressed that she was entitled, she was supposed to get based on the, the, the terms of the prenup. Um, but, you know, listen, Dr. Dre is worth probably a billion dollars. So here's the facts. Okay. Dr. Dre is a report, well, it's the facts, it's as re reportedly. Now Forbes does their own, like, what calculations wherever they get their sources they get their sources he's actually the maybe the third highest paid rapper right so number mm -hmm. one would be uh easy okay uh number two would be jay-z and then okay. he would be so they have him at about 880 million dollars okay well, eight, he's worth 880 million dollars yeah and she's getting three million dollars a year yeah okay y'all tripping I, what's, what, what is the issue? Why are we having this conversation? He's worth $800 million. Yeah. And she's getting $3 million a year? So $900,000 a month. Is, she's getting $3 million a year. Mm -hmm. So no, what she was asking for was $24 million. Correct. She's, got, she's getting three. Yeah. Why are we having this conversation? The only time. folks, I will share with you this. So again, I'm on Clubhouse. Love it. Um, are they paying us? Oh, you just I, I know I keep shouting them out, but it's just it's I, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll stop shouting them out because they're not frankly that I'm paying us. But I will say that I was on the other app, the mm -hmm. audio app, and all of these folks were having so, so many conversations about Dr. Dre and his wife, ex now ex wife, mm -hmm. Nicole, and the amount of her settlement. And y'all were mad. A lot of y'all black men were mad. He's broke dudes or dudes that are not millionaires or maybe some of them are millionaires. Mm -hmm. But a lot of dudes like 100,000 heirs were really, really pissed or just five figure heirs. Yeah. We're just really pissed about the fact that this woman got $3 million a year and this man is worth $800 million. Yeah. They live in California. Yep. It's a community property state. He needs to be happy he has a prenup because she could have gotten more. Mm -hmm. $3 million a year. The only person not complaining is Dre. Andre ain't said nothing about this. Well, I mean, he is what is three million dollars. That's like, ah, uh, here you go. And I don't do the, I don't do the um, interest math. And it's three million dollars her entire life unless she gets remarried. So we know she's not gonna get remarried. No, she ain't gonna get remarried. But uh, yeah, the whole interest payment thing, you know, how you calculate it on a certain dollar amount. But 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 obviously, if your worth is eight hundred something, you know, million, you're you're making money off of your investments. And I'm guessing, that, no, it probably is not that. Uh, pressed about it because he probably makes about three hundred thousand dollars a month in, in interest. Off, if if off, if so not that, more, if not more than that. Off There's of a his, drop. One, one of his accounts. I don't know what the percentage is because I can't do the math that fast. But if he's worth eight hundred million dollars and she's make she's getting three million dollars a year, that is a drop in the bucket. Yeah, and, and I, he will continue to produce records. Yeah, and I know what I don't know is if she'll get continue to get. I think they settled it, so she's stuck at three million, but. I mean, look, listen. What um, what's Jeff Bezos's ex-wife said? Uh, McKenzie got uh, got billions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? So, three million dollars is nothing compared to what she could have gotten. Yeah. So and the, Jeff Bezos ain't sweating that money. The, these are really, really the, the these space. are really really rich dudes. Jeff Bezos made that money back when he went to space. Let's just be clear. So he's not these 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 super wealthy men. The only folks that are tripping about what Nicole got in this settlement are dudes that are broke. Let's just be clear. And that's not even me trying to be funny. The folks that are not making a million dollars or are just making a million dollars, they're the ones that are upset about that. Yeah. The super, super, super wealthy men are not concerned about that. No, and I think it's, it is the principle behind it. And, you know, she obviously, you know, she probably would say she didn't work. Now there's some, there's some nuances uh, to what, you know, happened. She's also saying, um, she's also suggesting that um, there was verbal and mental abuse for uh, for a long, long time. He beat, she so listen, was, Michelle said he beat her behind. Well, so, uh, and Michelle actually has alleged that there was domestic abuse. Uh, so, I mean, I should say physical abuse when she was involved with him. So um, I'm not. I don't have any facts to, su to suggest that he did that to Nicole. But Michelle has been on record saying that he was abusive to her. So that's not me being messy. So, so I think, anyway, I'm not one of those people. I think she kudos to Nicole. I think she deserves. She got she got less than what she deserves for, tw for I think for she 25 years. Way, way, she, way more than he he got a, he got a, he got off he got off Scott. cheap yeah. yes, for three million dollars a year, and y'all complaining. It could have been much more.
So he he like I said, the only people complaining about it are broke dudes. The folks that have some money or not. He he, uh, you ain't heard Andre Dre say a single word yeah, about he that. Probably, he probably won't. Well, he's he don't you don't hear him say anything anymore. No, it's just it's whatever. Okay, anyway. what's next? Well, we we got we got some more sports stuff. I do. So it's the Olympics, yeah. and I know I got on here and talked big, talked cash mess. Um, and the last time it was maybe June instead of one go watch. I said, said one go watch. I'm Olympics. not watching the we Olympics because of Shakari. 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 Mm-hmm. I said it. I've watched because you know I have and not wa- watched. I have, and you've watched. I have. I've watched. I have. I'm not gonna lie. I have. When Shakari came out and was like, you know, I'm cool, and she still has her Nike. I still think the glimpse is real shady. Um, but I'm watching. Because to my husband's point and some other people's point, there are other black athletes that would do on our support. Um, and so I can't had a come to Jesus meeting with myself and said, if Shakari's okay, then I guess I could watch. And Shakari is okay. She's okay. So I walking. Um, primarily swimming just because my son is wanting to swim and I kind of want him to kind of watch the watch the swimmers. But anyway, so this week. Um, Simone Biles, um, who was, I think she may have been captain of the U.S. Olympic, Olympic team. I'm not sure. She probably was. I mean, I she is the oldest. Yeah, she's, she's the second oldest, but she's the person she with the most, the most Olympic experience. Yeah. So um, I watched the team trials mm-hmm. and she was off. She was kind of off in the Olympic trials too, but I, not, not trials, the qualifying round. Mm-hmm. I watched the Olympic qualifying round and she was kind of off. Um, and then in the team finals, which I did not watch, she did her vault, which is her specialty. I mean, the two things that, that Simone is phenomenal on are her floor routine. She's very good on beam too, but vault and floor are her, that's her thing. Yeah. Um, and so she did her vault and was doing her exercise on the vaults and was supposed to do a two and a half whatever tumble or turn or whatever and only made it one and a half rotations and then landed and the commentator which was telling to me um said oh that oh it's very unsimone it was very unsimone like they were shocked yeah the her teammates were shocked when they saw it and you could tell when she came off she talked to her trainers talked to her coaches and they went in the back and what simone said was let's let me back right up so um, Simone then came back and she said she was withdrawing from the team competition. And so Jordan Childs replaced her. And there was a lot of backlash about Simone not being a team player. And, and the reason that she said that she, they said, first they said injury. And then it came out that the reason that she withdrew was for mental health reasons. There was lots of backlash about Simone not being a team player, about her being the quitter, about the fact that she can't be the GOAT if she's going to quit on her team about how that, you know, just calling her selfish is all of this, um, all of this uh, vile and vit- vile comments and vitriol um, logged, at, logged at Simone about her decision. And th- I was irritated because to me, Simone don't owe nobody anything. Simone is the GOAT, period. Hard stop. Mm-hmm. She is the greatest gymnast of all time, probably one of the greatest Olympians of all time. Um, most decorated, most decorated gymnast for sure, male or female. Mm-hmm. So what Simone indicated was that when she was doing her um, exercise on vault and she was doing her, she was doing her twist in the air. She said what she got was called twisties. Mm-hmm. And so from what the, what I've read now is that in gymnastics, a lot of it's muscle memory. Mm-hmm. And so particularly when you're doing these these flips and you're kind of you're trying to your body is remembering kind of what it was doing before and you're landing and you've done it so many times that it kind of comes naturally. If you're not in that headspace and you get out of that, then you can lose where you are. And she said that she lost where she was and the commentator, when she was doing it, said that. She said she looks like she lost and didn't know where she was in her rotation, which can be catastrophic. So so Simone, luckily, because somebody said, because she's Simone Biles is why she landed on her feet after that Mm. tumble. Had she been any other gymnast, she could have landed on her leg, crushed her leg, landed on her neck. It could have just been very, very bad. Um, So the broader conversation developed into mental health and these like top tier athletes and why it is that we feel as 
as people who are watching, as observers, as the audience. Why it is we feel that these, these high performing athletes owe us anything other than what they've done. Like we take mental health breaks from work. You know, people take mental health yeah, breaks from work all the time. We have PTO days. We have PTO days. And sick days. But, for, but for some reason, these athletes, Naomi Osaka, Simone Biles, I know Serena Williams has had, has had conversations about her mental health. We hold these athletes um, to a different standard um, and it's it's sad. So the interesting thing is the, the three black women, Shakari, um, Naomi, and Simone, within a matter of two months or so, maybe a month time period, have all articulated that they were dealing with mental health issues. And instead of supporting these young ladies, what we've done is we have um, attacked them. And the most a lot of the attacks I saw, there were some women that did it, but lots of the attacks I saw were from men. And so my position is black women don't own y'all nothing. We are tired. So if a black woman says, I'm tired and we want to sit our tails down, damn it, let us sit our tails down. Um, and so I, for one, applaud Simone for taking control of her mental health. And she also pulled out of um, um, the individual, uh, the all around. All around. Mm -hmm. She pulled out the all around. And so she's, she's cheering her teammates on. And my position was that to me, it is she's a better teammate because instead of doing what people were suggesting that she do, just kind of push through, mm -hmm. she made a decision that if she continues, she could hurt herself. Mm -hmm. And in addition, she could harm her team. Mm -hmm. And so because she made a decision to step back and allow Jordan to fill in her space, who's an alternate, they won silver. So it wasn't, and they didn't, they didn't, they missed gold by a small, like one point something points. So it wasn't like a complete, you know, blowout, but they won silver. So now these young ladies are silver medalists from the Olympics. So, you know, if, you know, what, I, I'm not sure what your thoughts are, but I just, well, I was irritated. I just, I, you know, I don't really have any conflicting opinions. I, I actually agree. I think there is a double standard. I think that, um, yeah, I think men do push themselves, even in the wake of uh, emotional um, um, emotional stress. Mm -hmm. I think men uh, push themselves. I think men are, are, are more prone to just be in denial uh, about our, our feelings and about our mental health. Mm -hmm. I'm proud that certain athletes have now come out, especially in the NFL, have now come out and just said it's it's okay to you know to not to not be okay. And mm -hmm. we have to we we have to as a culture have to embrace that it's okay to admit sometimes that you know that you're not okay and all of the a stigma that is um, that surrounds it so i think you know the key issue here, here is is it a you know double standard you know are men looked at differently than than, uh, than women and and unfortunately there's probably not as many um, male athletes that are kind of going on record as saying look mentally i need to take a break um but um but i'm sure it's coming yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely I hope I hope so. And the other thing too um, is, in addition to her not being all the way there, the other side to that is a part of that may have also been the fact that she knew going into the Olympics they were not going to judge her fairly because if you remember what they said was that they were not going to assign the appropriate level of difficulty to the things that she was able to do on the different different uh, apparatus because her stunts were too difficult and would Correct. be catastrophic for any other athlete yeah. so you're penalizing her for being the greatest Correct. which makes no sense Simone is the best. She's able to do things on the vault, on the floor, on the beam that no other athlete is able to do. And instead of rewarding her for that, which you typically do, she's being penalized because you're not giving her the same level of difficulty. So I'm going to assume, and she mentioned that, she, you know, she was, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being penalized because I'm able to do these things, which is, you know, frankly unfair. But she did say that she, you know, she was very professional about it. She said sometimes being the best team player is knowing when you aren't, you aren't, you aren't fit mentally to really add value to the team. And I knew yeah. that these girls were able to do it, and they did it, and now they're silver medalists. So kudos to you, Simone. Whether or not you make a decision to participate in the all rounds, completely, not all rounds, but individual apparatus is completely on you. But sis, if you don't feel like it, 
um, you do not have to. You don't. Owe, you don't know any. You don't owe anyone anything, and you still are the greatest of all. Absolutely, time. Uh, without fail, without fail. And I want to, um, you know, if, if you know, and, and I would close out our show, I should say today. Um, we have, you know, we have uh, eight minutes or so, but um, I want to talk about COVID and back to school. We were we were going to talk mm. about uh, a, a conversation that that came up on the other app that you were referring to about open relationships. But I think we we're gonna, show. yeah, we're, we're gonna do a show on on um, on the love maze about open relationships and especially as it relates to black couples. But let's talk about COVID and 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 back to school and uh, back to professional sports. And I mean, this is really, I mean, we have been with you guys now for over a year, and you know, since the pandemic broke, we we launched this show right in the middle of all of the uncertainty around. The pandemic and I was we were at a point that I almost wore a mask uh, on the show s- sitting next to you because I don't know you like that I don't know where you've been and you, been listen, first of all let me tell you something my husband is an, claims to be an introvert he was out more last year than I was I was, I was using necessary precautions. no you weren't because I had to tell him before particularly when COVID was like real hot in the streets he would have to come home. I would have a towel and a robe out of the garage. Undress, strip all your clothes off. In the garage. Come and put them in the washing machine and let's wash and you go jump in the tub. Because we didn't know what kind of how it was. And I wasn't trying to infect my house. I kept my house. Bleach was everywhere. Yeah. I was not playing around with, with people. Yeah, anointing the uh, walls with uh, oil and all kinds Listen, of Listen, I, I prayed over my house. It was real weird. But anyway, um, so, now, so now we've gone through last summer gone through a whole entire school year exercising some measure of COVID protocol and and now it's time to go and then we went through of course this past summer and now it's time to get back to school yep. and we have this Delta variant that is out of control it is are we going to be locked back down again I mean who who knows but I don't who, think we will but I don't think we will either um especially because you know probably half of our country but especially your governor here in this particular state has now seen, he said in a recent speaking engagement, he actually joked. He, he, he joked with the audience and they were in Utah, which is a whole nother conversation. And he joked with Why the audience. Why is he in Utah? Because and he's, he's running for president of the United States in 2024. He's supposed to be running for governor, but he's terrible. Please vote him out, y'all. Go ahead. He said, did you not get the CDC's memo? So the, the, and the CDC memo that he is referring to is that the CDC has now said, as of the time of this particular recording, has now said their guidance is, is that even for vaccinated people, you wear masks. they are suggesting that you wear a mask inside. I've been wearing a mask and, and vaccinated. So I should be technically, I should be both of us are vaccinated and I should be wearing a mask around, around her. Because our, well, I don't know about around us, but I guess maybe, but our son is not vaccinated because he's not old enough to get vaccinated. So, yeah. um, so here's the thing we finished. I well, I mean, I was just saying his comment was, you know, did you not get him? So he, he made a joke about it, but then he said, I don't see you guys black, but then he said, I say that jokingly, but I'm trying to quote him because I don't want to, you know, put words in his mouth, but I think it may be a, a sign of potentially seeking to do more things in the future. I think it's very important that we say, talking about him and the people who follow him unequivocally no to lockdowns no to school closures no to restrictions and no mandates okay so that's what he said the opinion that i'm about to give is not the opinion of in touch news i'm not sure if it's the opinion of my husband it is my opinion he's an idiot um so number one your ag just recently got covid yes she did because she went to texas with you so she's got COVID. To the border to make a right. political right so you're somebody in your administration got covid mm-hmm. that's the first thing um, so the other part to that is Florida is leading or very close to leading at one point we were leading very close to leading this, the country in Delta variant cases, right? Um, you're saying people go back to school, mm-hmm. children under 12 cannot be vaccinated, which, that would include, which would include mm-hmm. our child that cannot be vaccinated yet. You're not requiring masks Mm -hmm. on a statewide level in school and so you have these silly behind parents who are refusing to get vaccinated and who are at school board meetings like the school board meeting in Hillsborough County who are comparing wearing masks to lobotomies and comparing wearing masks to the Jewish Holocaust you all are idiots you are idiots you are stupid again these are the these are the opinions of Monica alone 
cannot say if he co-signs this, but y'all are stupid and you're idiots. And I mean that from the depths of my soul. I think, I because, think because, because, it, because it's ridiculous. Yeah. It is absolutely insane. The science is real. People are dying for real. Over 600,000 people have died as a consequence of COVID and you all are still walking around. And the science has proven that wearing a mask prevents the spread. But so you all are still pushing back and using your children as pawns. It's really child abuse as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, and that's what they they're suggesting that to, to require um, students or require children to wear masks all day when some of the students you know come home with headaches and complain about and the masks are it's impossible to keep them um, to keep them keep them disaffected is is the equivalent. Wash the masks. They're disposable. All these are all these all these positions can be debunked. Wash the masks or there are disposable masks. If you are having your child wear the same mask all year, you're nasty, which is not too not too far off because there are some of y'all that don't bathe every day per Ashton Kutcher oh, and uh, right whatever her, whatever his wife is. They don't bathe every day. They don't bathe their children every day unless there's dirt on them and they only wash their private parts. So that's what they said. That's not what I say, I'm just reporting the news. All I would simply suggest is um, my suggestion to Black folks is that you get vaccinated. Please do. Please get, get vaccinated and wear a mask. All of this, well, what about the Tuskegee experiment? The Tuskegee experiment, yeah. the people had syphilis and they did not give them a vaccine, which is completely different. That's correct. It is not the same. There's a Black woman that has created the particularly Moderna vaccine. She was instrumental in the creation of Moderna. It works. And if and on top of that, no one said that if you get the vaccine that you may not get COVID. It's just going to reduce the chances that you were in the hospital and die. Yeah, and, and, uh, and That's what it is. And you talk about the science. Isn't, this, isn't that the same science behind the flu shot every year? Like you get Listen, a flu shot for the purpose been, of people, not, not like it's not You going still to, could get the flu. You still get the flu, but it, it certainly lessens the science. I mean, how stupid this is if you have children you have to be vaccinated before you get into school you have to be vaccinated mm -hmm. before you before you're entered into public school you have to have shots you have to have shots for various things half the people talk when they're not going to get a vaccine have been vaccinated for other things it's absolutely insane so what i would also say is if you all are not going to willingly do it the next step is if you are employed your employer is going to force you to get it because they are going to make getting vaccinated mandatory. Yeah, and so and if you are still on this, I don't want to get vaccinated island. I hope that you like the unemployment island because when your employer says that this is a condition of employment and you refuse to do so, and they say that we receive this as a voluntary, voluntary resignation and you lose your job, you not only you will be fired, but you also will not necessarily receive unemployment compensation because and, you have voluntarily resigned. And so my worst of as we close out today's show is going to go to, to uh, NFL players, DeAndre uh, Hopkins, I think his last name, and Leonard Fournette. Uh, for making comments on Twitter about, you know, this is going to question whether or not they want to stay Bye. in the league. Because Don't play. The NFL is, listen, your employer can, can require you to, to get vaccinated in order to uh, in order to work. So absolutely. Um, so with that, we're going to encourage you to listen to us and not people who make millions of dollars for, for playing a Just, sport who get who taking all kinds of supplements. Don't know what they are. So, so Mark, so record so, this, mark this as mark this date that the HR professional yes. and the HR lawyer have shared with you that your employer, it's about to go down. Your yes. employer is going to mandate that you get vaccinated in order to return to work. And that, if you make a decision that you, as, a, as a condition of continued employment. You have been watching. You have been watching. And as a condition of so employment. Purpose, you've been watching so purpose. So I'm your host, Keith. This is my lovely opinionated host, Monica. We'll see y'all next week. Get vaccinated. Wear a mask. See y'all later.